Welcome to Dr. Charles Speaks, a podcast for now. You've joined us for a special series of transformational talks, selected exclusively from Dr. Charles' corporate success calls. The 15-minute calls are designed to encourage leaders, activate your thought life, and prepare you for the challenges ahead. Dr. Charles joins every call with a blend of his personal experiences, his expertise as a John Maxwell certified mentor and coach, and of course, his more than 30 years of exceptional experience in both corporate America and ministry. Get motivated with Dr. Charles Speaks, a transformational talk from the red line on today's podcast, inspiring excellence and generating results. Good day, and let's make it a great day. Thank you for joining me on the Red Line Success Call. This call, this 15 minutes, is designed to start your week off on a positive note, and certainly it is to continue to inspire you, at least I hope so, though that you may be challenged to grow in your personal leadership growth. And so it is on today. I want to talk to you about growth and growth equals change. That's what I want to talk to you about with the time that we have on today. For reality says nothing stays the same except the fact that change is always present. And folks who are just stuck in their ways and don't want to change and don't want to do anything because that's the way they've done it all their lives, watch out because you may be left behind as change is in the air. There was a gentleman by the name of Charles Exley of the NCR Corporation. He said, he said, look, I've been in business 36 years and I've learned a lot. Most of it doesn't apply anymore. And that's what I want to talk to you about. There is growth and that growth, it equals change. For unchanged leaders equals unchanged organizations. And so while change is in the air, what about the changes that are needed to be made? I want to talk about that and talk about how we can go about making positive change. Number one, the first order of things to be changed is me and you together as leaders You know, after I consider how hard it is to change myself, then I can understand the challenge of trying to change others. So it begins with uno, number one, me, myself, and I, and you. That's where change begins, because the more we change, the more we become instruments of change in the lives of others. If we want to become a change agent, we also must change. And so we are going to be lights of the world. We're going to go out as beacons of lights and be able to affect the environment, the place we work, the place we live, the place that we enjoy. We can make a difference. And it begins with quality of leadership. For with quality of leadership, you will depend upon your ability to evaluate new ideals, to separate change from the sake of change, from change for the sake of me. And so the reality today is people will not change until they perceive that the advantages of changing outweighs the disadvantages of continuing with the way things are done. And that's where I I believe I can help you on today by helping you be able to make the perfect uh, spill to your people, to be able to share with them this ideal of change in the particular environment. Because the leader must be out in front to encourage the change and growth and to show the way to bring it about. You know, when you think about change and you say, well, what does that mean? What does that mean for me? What does it mean for my organization? It means that change means traveling in uncharted waters. And this, my friends, causes our insecurities to rise because we form habits and we get ourselves into a habit. And these habits, they prevent us from thinking or going outside of the box because this is the way we've done it. We've gotten used to it. And we have a routine. And inside of the routine, uh, nothing changes because it is a routine. You see, habits allow us to do things without much Thought, which is why most of us have so many habits. Change, however, it threatens our habit patterns 
and forces us to think and forces us to reevaluate and sometimes to unlearn past behaviors. I know one particular habit I have right now, I've got to break and I'm working on it and it's going to break. And that is I stop by the uh, the gas station and I uh, go inside and I get me a cup of coffee and I've got to have a donut to go with it. You know how much sugar that is and how many calories that is in the beginning of the day. It's way too much. So uh, I'm trying my best to break that habit. It's just my body just cries out for that cup of coffee and that donut. They go hand in hand. But it's not necessarily good for me because I've got to work hard to work off of those bad calories and not let um, uh, my diet get out of control by eating the wrong foods and consuming too much of it and having another problem to go with it. So we can relate to habits that we have, uh, whether it's getting up in the morning and doing your routine and getting off to the highway to go to work or wherever it might be. There are routines and habits we have. And uh, so today we want to talk about how do we deal with the changes at hand, whether they're personal changes or whether they're changes that are happening on the workplace. And one of the main things that I want to give you as a golden nugget as relates to change, listen now, give the people ownership of change. Don't just make changes in your dreams or in your morning devotion or in your time of reflection. You just decided you're going to make a change, and that's the way it's going to be it, and it's my way uh, or the highway. Well, change is in the air, and one of the things that we're going to have to do and realize that people are going to make all of the difference in the kind of change that you want to have in your organization. Too often, leases of any organizations, they tend to think and lead from the company's perspective, not from the people. And so we don't want to fall down that particular uh, trail because then it's all about the company's perspective and not including and involving the people uh, who are going to make it happen, who are the link in the chain, who is going to be the difference maker and you achieving your objective with change in mind. Now, I want to go through uh, some of these areas of how uh, to offer ownership of change to the people that you serve. And this is what you can do. Number one, You can inform people in advance. Now, that sounds kind of strange because most times corporations want to keep it everything in the boardroom and then spring it all at one time and people have to fend for themselves and deal with the change. But number one, how to offer this ownership includes informing the people that are going to be affected in advance. Why? So that they have time to think about the implications of the change and how it will affect them. It sounds different, I know, because we don't want to spill all the beans, so to speak, and let the people start hearing uh, about changes coming and they're getting their resumes ready to get off and jump ship and go somewhere else. But that doesn't necessarily mean that will happen. Those that are going to leave, they're going to leave anyway. Whether you tell them up front or whether you don't tell them at all, they're not going to be on the bus and leading the way down the road. So those that have uh performed and year in and year out have done their level best and continue to bring results. Yes, you do want to inform those people in advance so that they can have time to think about the implications of the change and how it will affect them. Number two, you want to have the platform to explain the overall objective of the change and give the reasons for the change and how and when those changes will occur. And then number three, show people how the change will benefit them. Change is not always negative. It can be positive. Be honest with your employees or or the people involved in change who they, some of them may lose out as a result of the change and just be transparent with them, alert them early and offer assistance to help them find another opportunity if necessary. 
Uh, I, we've had a situation in my organization, it was a few years back, and people were given a chance to think about it and evaluate the changes. They knew what was going on, and they could elect to volunteer, or they could stay and do what they do. But at least the company was transparent, and uh, the people were appreciative of them being out front and being able to make an intelligent decision, and they did. And many of them moved on, and many of them stayed. And uh, it worked out for both sides. And that's what we really want as it relates to giving ownership of change to others. Number four, ask those who will be affected by the change to participate in all of the stages of the change process. And that's so important, getting people involved and actually uh, putting some traction with that and actually working in the midst of that change as being a business partner, so to speak. That fifth point is keep communication channels open. That next point, be flexible and adaptable throughout the change process. Go ahead and admit the mistakes along the way and make the changes where appropriate. People will respect you that much more when they realize that you stood up and said, hey, we made a mistake here, but we're going to do something about it. We're going to change it to the big picture. We're still going to do what we said we're going to do, but we're going to make this tweak right here. We're going to make this change, and we want to make sure that everybody is aware of it because we're not trying to play any games. We're simply trying to keep everybody in the loop. Then that next point, number seven, constantly demonstrate Your belief in and commitment to the change indicate your confidence in their ability to implement the change. That is so important because as you believe in the thing, then it is evident to those that you're expecting to change. Your confidence of being able to share with the team and others that you have faith, you have trust in what the changes are going to bring about, and that they're going to be implemented for the good of everybody will certainly make a difference. That last point, we're talking about how to offer ownership of change to others. You want to provide enthusiasm, assistance, and appreciation and recognition to those that are implementing the change. Because if nothing changes, nothing changes. And that is the reality of this discussion on today, is that we can make changes, but then when they affect others, it is so important that we bring them into the loop and we bring them in in a way that they become partners in working with us and for us to implement these changes for the better. Albert Hubbard said, the greatest mistake a person can make is to be afraid of making one. And so whenever there's change in the air, people will tend to think perhaps this is not the right thing to do or or they may be a little they might have a little bit of cold feet before stepping out and making those changes. But the thing about it, when you don't do anything, that's a mistake in itself. And so today, my folks, I want to close by just simply saying you can make a choice today. You can make a choice today to change. You can make a choice today to not to change. But I encourage you to change because when you change, you'll see. And when you look back, you'll call it not only change, but you'll call it growth. And that's really what we want to do. We want to grow. We want to be better. And so I'll leave you with this quote from Max Dupree. He says, in the end, it is important to remember that we cannot become what we need to be by remaining what we are. Let me say that again. In the end, folks, it is important to remember that we cannot become what we need to be by remaining what we are. We've been talking about change because growth equals change. You've been listening to Dr. Charles of the Redline Success Call. Thank you again. Have a great day. Now let's go back to work and make it even a greater day. God bless. Thank you for listening to Dr. Charles Speaks. Visit drcharlesred.com for booking info for your ministry, business, or leadership team. Get info about The Red Line, a 15-minute corporate success call each Monday morning with Dr. Charles. Follow Dr. Charles on all social media at Dr. Charles Red. Subscribe to the podcast here for every episode of Dr. Charles Speaks. Thanks for joining us. Like Dr. Charles always says, 
No matter what, never, never, never give up. Until next time.